where the fuck have you guys been? There's been no podcast for weeks. It's not my fault. Credo moved, Mike moved. Took a while for them to set up their man caves. Yeah, well, I thought you all had fucking meningitis. Oh, God. It's time for... Uh, another wrestling podcast. All right, all right, all right. Ooh, it's quite a. It's been quite a while. I'm Credo. I'm Minority Mike. And yes, you're listening to another wrestling podcast. You already know who the fuck I am. There's no need to introduce myself. I mean, really. Well, we stand there he goes, putting right. himself over without even saying his name. <laughs> who else? We've come can to do that, that point. We've come to that point. <laughs> Guys, he's uh, angry, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we, we, you know, if you if you're joining us, we've we've been on hiatus for uh, I don't know a few weeks. Uh, I moved, Mike, you moved. Uh, we've been we've been shuffling around and uh, you know starting a new chapter, I guess, if you will. Well, let's not confuse everybody. We didn't move together. <laughs> I know. But we did move. He moved separate. Yeah, I'm, move I'm expecting an announcement from you two soon. I mean, shit. <laughs> Come on, man. You might offend some sensitive people. Let's not go there. Oh, whatever. Cooter, did you move? Hey, what episode is this? 169. He said 69. Right after he said you guys were moving. <laughs> well, well, that's what happens, guys. Another wrestling podcast. We're back. We're talking. You know, there's so much, so many things that have happened in probably the four weeks we've been away. Oh, I forgot to ask you guys. What's that? When you guys moved, who became your cable and internet provider? I have Spectrum. I still have Verizon oh. FiOS. Oh, God. Because I have Optimum. And let me explain to you. Optimum is complete trash. (laughs) Try watching the TLC pay-per-view on your cell phone because you got no fucking Wi-Fi. So God bless the great people at AT AT&T Wireless with my full data plan, unlimited. I was able to watch the pay-per-view as small as it could be. But Optimum, fuck you. Get your shit straight. Because if this fucking thing gets cut off, it's because they're cutting my internet off again. <laughs> well, hey, uh, three different network- networks, three different Wi-Fis, three different guys. This is what we're doing. Uh, like I said, there's so many things that have happened. We've been away. Uh, you gotta, you got to collect yourself. The streak ended a while ago, so it's okay. We don't need to, to keep trying to build a new streak. So this is the, the beauty of doing the show when you want to do the show, right? So, guys, we just missed a lot of stuff, though. A lot of things have happened, and who would have thought meningitis would have been the savior a few weeks ago uh, <laughs> out of anything that has ever happened in the wwe this was probably a blessing in disguise let's just, let's just start there i mean that's probably the best thing to start with meningitis to the, to the rescue right oh i loved it uh, well i didn't I feel bad for everybody that had to suffer with the meningitis but thank you to whoever started that outbreak i was actually bo dallas Bo Dallas was the plague. He was he was the virus that started this whole thing, and then it went from Bray Wyatt. Obviously, JoJo. With rumors has it JoJo didn't have it, but I call bullshit on that. And then Roman, <laughs> Roman decides to get the mumps. Where did he get that from? Uh-huh. <laughs> uh huh. Patient but- zero was Bo Dallas. He yeah. finally did something worthy in his wrestling career and gave us a raw pay-per-view without Roman Reigns and a fucking dream match that would have otherwise yeah. featured his brother in drag. <laughs> so thank you, Bo Dallas, for being the fuckboy that you are. Now, yeah. listen, listen, I, I'm not that – like, I don't really care about the fact that Roman Reigns was gone. I mean, I, I was still kind of looking forward to that Shield match with the TLC just just because I knew that there was going to be some awesome spots with Roman because he always delivers when it comes to those hardcore type matches. But the fact that like, I mean, Bray Wyatt and Finn Balor should have been done two months ago. (sighs) I mean, that that feud was doing nobody justice. And I was dreading this match. And then when I hit that news hit, it was just one of the most glorious days Man, ever. It, like the sun shine through the clouds. Bl- blessing in disguise is that meningitis because, you know, 
Uh, TLC, I mean, it's the B pay-per-view. It's a B pay-per-view. It's not one of the big ones. So it's, you know, tables, ladders, chairs. And speaking of, there's only one tables, ladders, and chairs match that whole pay-per-view. But, you know, we got Kurt Angle uh, coming out of retirement for the first time on WWE TV at a B pay-per-view. Uh, AJ versus the Demon at a B pay-per-view WrestleMania-worthy match. Man, uh, they pulled out all the stops because, man, I, I guess since losing Roman Reigns and Bray, they thought they had to really pull the trigger on uh, these two guys. But out of any, anybody, though, this is a good question because you bring Kurt Angle back and, okay, is out of nowhere, but you mean to tell me that nobody else would have made sense joining the Shield that night except for Kurt Angle? Was that too soon or is it just like they had to pull the trigger on it? I got a theory, and my theory was based on uh, stupidity, naturally, because I'm, I'm a stupid bastard, but it somewhat makes sense. Raw travels all around the country all throughout the week. Who's the one guy who's not there? It's Kurt Angle, so he's not in the locker room. God forbid you, two days out, promote somebody else to be on that pay-per-view mm. who could have been like infected with one of these viruses or whatever it was in that locker room. It's It's a safe bet that Kurt Angle, who's not going to be on the road with these guys, is going to be infected by anything, so you can promote him. And the same with AJ Styles, because he's outside of the country. So, I mean, I think that had a lot to do with it. It was just, we can put these guys and pretty much guarantee that they're not going to be sick the night of the pay-per-view. Hmm. Uh, you, you know what? I mean, I, I kind of look at that roster, and I mean, they, they could have just thrown Finn in there, but it wouldn't have made sense. I, I think they just kind of panicked. And they, they called uh, Mr. Angle up and uh, asked him if he still had his boots and asked him if he could still do a couple things. And, and they made him do a physical as soon as possible because they still wanted to I, – I think in their mind they thought we were so intrigued by a Finn Balor and Bray Wyatt and a Shield which, with the Roman Reigns. They thought that was a big loss. Um I don't think there was anybody else in the roster you could have thrown in there unless you moved somebody up from NXT, but there's not really anybody in NXT to really think about it. Yeah. Well, you know, it was one of those, you know, hey, we got to do something, so let's do it now. Hopefully they'll build off of that, and we'll we'll still get Kurt later on down the line. But, you know, AJ versus the Demon, i got to skip ahead to that really quick because, uh, out of an, once again, you know, uh, Bray Wyatt got sick, right? Out of anybody else on the Raw roster, they, they move over AJ Styles from SmackDown, and we get that kind of match. Bullet Club leader versus Bullet Club leader. Uh, you know, dream match, and we're, we're using it on a TLC pay-per-view. I mean, wow, uh, just to get people to watch it, I guess. But uh, once again, did they pull the trigger too soon, or they had to have this match to get people to watch? I think the people that were really invested in a Shield reunion, and that, that in Vince's mind, was a big deal. Because, let's be honest, it's the first time that the fans have cheered Roman Reigns. It was like the last ditch effort. What can we do to finally get them to cheer Roman Reigns? And, and quite honestly, I think they almost fucked that up, but we can talk about that in a moment. But, <laughs> you know, in order to combat that, it's like, oh man, what is what reason is to watch that pay per view? There is no complete shield. Uh, that was pretty much the main draw. And, and Bray Wyatt in drag, uh, yeah, not so much, but. <laughs> I can see how it was highly featured on the card, even though I think most of us thought it was going to be a fucking drizzling shits of a match, as Ole would like to say. <laughs> I'm just, I can't think of that. Cause like, I mean, remember a few months ago, Bray Wyatt was the WWE champion. And now we're like, uh, I was just dreading to see what they were going to do with him. I mean, I, I hope we just forget about it, sweep it under the rug, pretend that never happened. But also, you know, the next night, uh, AJ, I mean, uh, the demon or just Finn Balor lost to 40 something year old Kane, uh, which is another day for another topic. But I mean, I don't, I don't know what the hell they're doing with him. Uh, if they're going to push him so hard to be, to beat the SmackDown, uh, AJ and you lose the next day to Kane pushing 40 something, whatever five, I don't know how old he is. He's up there though, but he just came back. He, he got, he needed to get that rub running from mayor. Ugh, I know it's like he had to beat the beloved Finn Balor who just came off one of the best matches of his career on the main roster. And then all of a sudden, he, they job him the cane. Uh, a lot of people had a sour taste in their mouth at that because it's like, how do you have him beat one of the top guys in the wrestling and then lose to a 40-something, whatever-year-old cane? So mean, many so many people were like, oh, well, he got choke slammed three times. He got <laughs> choke slammed three times. 
Wow. Here's so here's something even off the topic when it 50. comes to I'm King. sorry. He's a 50 year old. I keep saying 40 something. That's what I said. Jeez. Jeez. Oh. 50, year 50 old years old and he beats one of the hottest wrestlers oh on the roster right now that that really bothered me I, like I, I don't know what Vince was thinking with this like I understand you want to build Kane up for Braun Strowman you want to make Kane look like a monster then why can't Kane instead of having a one-on-one match with one of the top guys on the roster mm-hmm. right now just destroy people yeah like just like what Braun did yeah him. yeah Ugh. pretty much it, it just it bothers me because like you had you you set up a redemption for Finn Balor who you can start building him up where he can sort of be credible when that match comes where he's gonna face Brock Lesnar, but when he loses clean to a guy like Kane, how is that gonna make me believe mm. that he is a contender for Lesnar? <laughs> like, that, that bothers. Me. You know what was driving me nuts about the whole Kane thing? What was he was obviously brought back. Uh, to go up against like Roman Reigns because of the whole like brother to the Undertaker thing, and I'm like, why would you do that? Mm. As creative, you finally have Roman Reigns over. So let's remind the fans of something that pissed them off so bad about how he beat the Undertaker, because that's gonna work in your favor. <laughs> you know, you, you bring, finally you bring you've done it. They're cheering for him, but oh wait, remember he beat the Undertaker? <laughs> oh boo! You know what I'm saying? What the fuck guys- is wrong with you people? You, you know what's funny? It's like you bring up how the, how Kane is allegedly the brother of Undertaker. They have not mentioned that on WWE television for years now, that they're brothers. Yeah. It's oh, like yeah. they just swept it under the rug. I think they might have mentioned it on Monday. No, they definitely didn't. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, okay, so the only thing I could think of in my head is like if I had to be creative and they put me in a situation for Kane, I'm like, okay, well, maybe he beats... Finn Balor, quote unquote, you can't see my air quotes, but but maybe this will set up another demon uh, Kane versus the demon Finn Balor or whatever, you know. And it's like uh, maybe one day they'll have like a little, I don't know rematch, but it's that's the only thing I can I, think of. It's like only the demon could beat the demon. I don't know. See, I, I look at it this way: like I understand, like all right, like these guys are gonna go off on like a a feud. They're gonna have a program. Then I understand. Okay, he got the first one. They're going to start 50-50 booking with these two. And now he's going to come back as the demon. And he's going to beat Kane and, and move on. You know, I, I understand that style of booking. You want to put over the demon. But they're not having a program. It, it's, yeah. it meant no sense. Well, is Vince, like, scared <laughs> that the momentum that Balor had coming off that AJ match, that he's going to start another Daniel Bryan-type movement where the mm. fans are just going to be so in love point. that they're just going to go nuts? And Vince is not going to have control over it. So he, did he try to just kill the momentum before it happened? It's amazing because, like, think of the momentum when he came first debuted. I mean, he beat Roman clean, and then he became the first universal champion. And then, boom, gets injured, and then we kind of can't really build him up fast again. We kind of kind of see what happens, and it's like a slow push. And, yeah, like what you said right there, it's almost like you're afraid to, to do anything with him. Yeah. I don't know. But you, you guys, Poor Braun Strowman is making a career of beating up senior citizens, by the way. <laughs> this is fucked up. <laughs> Well, guys, I almost forgot Oscar debuted too. We we forgot that. Uh, I'm so sour on the whole subject because I just hate this whole undefeated thing. It does nothing for her coming in from NXT undefeated. Now on the main roster, oh, undefeated. You're so racist. So God, only against Japanese people. Never. Yes, losing. exactly. Never losing. <laughs> but He's a uh, fan of dolphins. Credo loves dolphins, ladies and gentlemen. Dolphins. Here's you know, my here's my grievance. About. Here's my grievance with this Oscar debut. So Asuka on NXT was a beast, was a monster. She was slaying through the women's division, right? And they're building her up as her debut as this unstoppable female who's just going to tear through the roster. I really think that her first match on the main roster should have been a squash match. She just should have just smashed Emma. Now, Emma, don't, no disrespect to Emma. She's a talented in the ring. But I really do think that she should have just smashed her, and that should have been a quick match. It should have been, should not have been 50-50 booking on that end. I mean, Emma got more offense on Asuka than I think any female did on the NXT roster. Uh, it was a good match. match. It, was, it, it was, was a good match, don't get me wrong, but yeah. it's just like, you know, like you're, you're building... Emma isn't built to be like a main 
heel female on the on the women's roster. She's more of like your mid Carter status okay. women's roster, and and she's having a fifty fifty booking with someone who's an undefeated streak going right now and is supposed to be booked as a monster and is supposed to smash through everybody. That's the only thing I didn't really like about it. Yeah, I almost thought they were going to do the the reverse, though. I thought they were just going to let her lose, like, the first match and then just end that whole thing and then have her, I don't know, do whatever. But that's what I thought it was heading to with that long match. Like, if, you know, she should really put on a longer match, really putting Emma over, but still. Yeah, I don't think Emma gets enough credit because I think she's a great fucking wrestler. Amazing athlete. Yeah, but, you know, if, if... if Mike, you saying you want to put her in a squash match for her first match, it can't be Emma. I mean, Emma's too good. You want to do a squash match? Throw her in the fucking ring with Dana Brooke. The only I mean, you thing can't is- have a squash Emma. Emma's been fucked over for God knows how long and for how many I, years. I completely agree with you. I get it, but the, here's the thing: they're not booking Emma to be a good competitor. Emma is amazing in the ring, but she's her feuds right now is just pointless. Like she's she's not even a title contender. Mm. Like well, the, she I, I feel be. like she you know how be, fast absolutely. fucking creative works in, in WWE. You but know, we're talking creative here. We're not talking. I mean, they really don't care. Yeah, that's my doing. point, because you went from Jinder Mahal being a scrub on Raw to a month later being a champion, WWE champion on SmackDown. That can change at the drop of a hat uh-huh. when it comes to creative. They haven't that's done it yet. Mahal so. biggest star and you, you wouldn't even see it coming. Yeah. But they haven't done anything yet with Emma. And that's the sad thing right there. And Emma I think going. Yeah, I think going into that Oscar match, they needed to build up Emma as a strong competitor. Yeah, I mean, they didn't I do that. I still can't believe that was her first pay per view match ever. Wow. Yeah, that then that's another thing too. <laughs> like, she's so good, but that's her first ever pay per view singles match. Jeez. Wow. Well, you know, guys, that was some TLC. I know we've been away for a little bit. There's other things happening. Let's jump around a little bit. Uh, before we get to what happened last week, I want to get into a little bit of other things that have happened, especially Enzo becoming a two-time, since we've been going on, a two-time cruiserweight champion. I get it. I, he, trust me. I get why he, they made him champion. I get why he's down there. I personally think he's doing good there, just creating the – he's a bigger star in the cruiserweights than he almost ever was on the main roster in a way. But still, uh, we have Enzo as a two-time champ. Uh, with with all that happening, there's stories happening that Neville may have walked out and left because of this. Uh, what, do, what do you guys think of that? I mean, Neville, Pac, whatever you want to call him from back then, you know, such an incredible athlete. Does not – I think after he lost to Enzo, they should have moved him up to the main roster or somewhere else and just – he should have broken out of it, you know – the cruiserweights, but maybe he, I don't know. We don't know what happened. You know, it's all dirt cheap bullshit. So we don't know fully what was going on, but he hasn't been seen. He's been taken out of the intro two Oh five live. Uh, did he walk out? Did he leave? Did he, was, was he pissed off that out of anybody who could beat him, it became Enzo Amore. And I don't know guys, what, what do you think about this whole situation? Because, you know, Enzo two time champ, poor Kalisto, uh, you know, he had <laughs> Kalisto, man, Mike's favorite, Mr. Lucha thing himself. <laughs> you know, thing, I can't mess. believe they're doing like these quick one week champs. Uh, who's the first? Uh, uh, the first was what's his name? Tazawa. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tazawa now Kalisto, and then man, like, what are they? Are, are they like trying to make this into the hardcore championship? I don't get what they're <laughs> trying to do with the cruiserweights, but at the same time. I don't mind what Enzo's doing. He's cheating. Uh, he's great on the mic. I give him that. He does make you know things flow better and makes me want to tune in to, to to watch the cruiserweights a little bit more. But still, uh, tell me your thoughts on what's going on. I mean, two time champ Neville's gone. What is happening down there? Are they just I don't know second guessing this whole cruiserweight division or what? He definitely makes that show more watchable. I mean, <clears throat> compared to the cruiserweight classic, we've been saying it since the inception. The, the matches, except for a rare occasion, are, are not up to par with what they were in that tournament. And it's just a watered-down, cruiserweight version of sh- typical, shitty storyline WWE television. He at least brings something watchable about it. If they restack that roster, because again, it's been over a year, and the only additions that we've had since the... the Original inception of this division has been the addition of Enzo, Kalisto, and yeah, Neville. Yeah. But other than that, it's all been pretty much the same people, and most of them were the scrubs who got bounced in the first or second rounds of that tournament. Oh. So yeah. I think they need to bring some people in there 
uh, I don't know. <laughs> you got that Leo Rush down in NXT. He's perfect for that division. The rumors of uh, Ricochet, you never know. I mean, any anything was better than what the hell they were putting on. I mean, it was just terrible. Let me ask it's, you guys this real quick because uh, it's a part of what's going on. Okay, think of all the champs for the Cruiserweights. Uh, Neville, Enzo. Uh, okay, not counting the two quick ones. Well, you can count Kalisto a little bit too, but those were the champs. They don't have any... Uh, faith in anybody else on that cruiserweight division to hold that championship longer or, or what? Like just add that to what I was saying before too. But I mean, it's been guys who weren't in the cruiserweight division that are holding on to the cruiserweight championship. Isn't that crazy? But a lot of those cruiserweights would have benefited for some time down in NXT. Absolutely. Because they do not have a good character that people can get behind. So I, I think, mean, if they had, go ahead. I think the best character on 205 Live, you guys might not agree with me, but right now I'm actually very, like, I, I get a laugh every time Drew Gulak I love is him. on there doing his PowerPoint presentations. <laughs> I, I think that's besides, you know, what they have going on with Enzo. I, I think that's another great character they have building in 205 Live. Other than that, like, I mean, what else is there? Like, you have Tozawa that just yells. You have, that's my point exactly, I can't even come off the top of my head with anybody else. Rich Swan, who's somebody who they seem to have a little bit of faith in. He's they, pretty he much, dances. Right. TJ Perkins, who's got, like, the personality of a dead fish. Who I don't even know <laughs> what he is. He's a tweener. Is he a face? Is he a heel? I, I know, and I love TJ Perkins as a wrestler, but yes. shit. And I can't blame him. I really can't. I can't blame majority of these guys on the roster. It's the creative process. It's the people that are writing this crap for them. You, you know what? I, I loved WCW's cruisery division because oh, yeah. they they didn't need to come out there and have a big segment every week. They didn't need to be on TV for 15 minutes talking and whatever. They came out, had an awesome match, and that was it. And then they moved on to the other show. And for this, it's like... Yes, the E is entertainment, but come on. I mean, like, the Cruiserweight division should be those special kind of matches, and we don't need a whole big, you know, that's why Enzo's there is almost to make it interesting, and it's like, I don't know. I feel like they don't need to have five-on-five five matches every week on Raw. Just have that, just showcase the Cruiserweights one-on-one, -on -one, something like that. I don't know. I think WCW used to do it better than what they're doing right now, and it's like they have to try to make this big spectacle out of every every division. I don't know. But you see, know what? The, the, the difference between that, Credo, WCW and today's cruiserweight, vision, uh, cruiserweight division was the fact that WCW at least had good characters in their cruiserweight division. You had a Lionheart, Chris Jericho. You had a man of a thousand holds in, in Dean Malenko. Mm. You had a Rey Mysterio. I mean, these were all different personalities. They all had a character that you could get behind. I mean, for Christ's sake, Dean Malenko, mm. Mr. Quiet Mouth Nobody himself, Won the fucking PW5 uh, 500 for the fact that he was such a great wrestler. But he had that fucking character that you could get behind. Yeah. You know, it was one of the one of the things that made that Finn Balor AJ Styles match so special. Okay. This is the, and listen to me on this. This is the fact that there was no storyline attached to it. Yeah. There was no build up for it. It was just a match between two excellent performers. That's all it was. Why can't the cruiserweight division do the same thing? Because they have a lot of technically gifted athletes in that division. And, and I understand some storylines have to happen, especially with the titles involved. But why does everything have to happen? Why can't we, we just have bona fide wrestling matches? Yeah. I, I, I want to agree with you and I want to disagree with you because I was so pissed off at a lot of the fans who were like, Oh, how are you going to put that match on? There's no story behind it. And, and yes, it was a great match. But that's where I'll agree with you. It didn't need a story, but it had a story. Because all us fucking marks who were on mm -hmm. the internet and who have followed other promotions, oh, wow, the two leaders of the Bullet Club, it's a dream match. It wasn't a dream match because it was Demon versus fucking AJ Styles. It was a dream match because every fucking mark and their grandmother knew it was the two former leaders of the Bullet Club, and this is something that we thought we would never see. Yeah, for that—that that was the best thing about that match, though. Sure, the I agree with you. WWE 
had nothing to do with their story. Exactly. Their story is known by all the wrestling fans. They didn't have to tell the story. I guarantee you, if WWE had time to tell that story. <laughs> oh, my God. We get Sister AJ or something <laughs> yeah. stupid, man. But, yeah, it, it, uh, a lot of things are happening. I want to keep going on because there's just a lot of stuff I, we got to get to. Uh, the one biggest thing uh, – well uh, – well, let's go to this first, uh, and then we'll go to the other big thing, because I know we're all going to agree and disagree and just, I don't know, talk a lot about. But Brock versus Ginger, what did Kurt say, Mal? Or who is that, Ginger Mal? The Ginger, other night? Ginger Mayhall. <laughs> G- he doesn't, you can see, he watches. Guys, guys, I am sick of the Ginger Mahal experiment. You know, trust me, when he won it, it was great. It was great shock. We needed to the system. I under, I got it. I get it what they did, but at the same time, I'm like, okay, I'm over it. Uh, he hasn't done anything spectacular with it since. I mean, he had a little great little program with Randy Orton. After that, you know, doing this and that, I don't know. It, he fucking beat Shinsuke Nakamura clean. That's another thing we missed when the show was off. But uh, you know, <laughs> I feel like he does the same thing each week. He comes in there like he he's. He's hoarse with his fucking throat. I don't know what he's doing with his throat, but man, he, he's always like, oh, I'm gender- I don't know. It's not even he's not even faking it. It's just something is up with his voice. But it's like the same promo, the same thing. Like he doesn't do anything unique. And I'm like, okay, guys, we got the India market or whatever. Can we just move on now? Like you look at guys like AJ uh, Styles, and I think you know, people were posting it the other night where he was in Chile and he was sick, and then he went uh, to TLC, then he went on Raw, and then the Smack. Like the dude was like the model champ right there. Like that's what a champion should do, just to be that face at every place, right? But I'm just okay. I got it. I I got it. What Ginger Mahal did, but I'm I'm just over it. Like I feel like he's not really adding anything else to that championship or doing anything. And now we're gonna get Brock versus Ginger Mahal. You're gonna get I, exactly what you want in this match. I, I was, I'm, I would really want this to be like a unification and just give Brock all the fucking championships. You know what I mean? I'm just like, get it away from him. But still, I mean, uh, out of all the guys Brock has faced in the past few years, we're up to Jinder Mahal right now. And if he <laughs> fucking wins, I swear to God, we're. I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna do. But uh, tell me, guys, what's your thoughts on Brock versus the Jinder? I like the concept between uh, you, in regards to the whole pay per view itself. Every Raw champion is up against his SmackDown counterpart, so I mean that's that's cool. I mean it, it brings uh, it brings some importance back to Survivor Series because we all love the whole four on four matches from when we were kids in the eighties and nineties and shit. And slowly but surely that changed into just regular singles matches with the occasional. You know, four on four, five on five, whatever it's going to be. But now you got something where it means something. You got SmackDown champions versus the Raw champions. And then you got a five on five with your top five guys who aren't champs against your, and, and, and your top five women who aren't champs. So I think it, it, it means something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I like, I like the whole idea. And it's plus, I mean, who doesn't want to see fucking, you know, Indians flying all over there. It's the first time you've seen Indian flying through the arena without a carpet underneath them. Can't wait for the Indian announce table. I have to go against. I don't do not like Survivor Series this year, as of right now. I the just night of champions. Pretty much. <laughs> I mean, I just don't. I, I I like the whole concept of the SmackDown team versus the Raw team in a Survivor Series style match, but. How am I going to get invested in Miz versus Corbin? You got two heels. It's n- no build up, both of them. Oh. And I just can't really get into that. And then, don't even get me started with the invasion that happened. I, I thought it could have been done a lot better. But I- I'll get to that in another story. Mm-hmm. Let's stick to Lesnar and Mahal. That match, I mean, you're not doing any, any of these guys any justice. Like, if Lesnar just walks through Mahal. How special is that title, really, that Mahal carries? Like, it, it just makes the entire, the rest of the SmackDown roster look like like bums. Mm. That Mahal did that. And then Mahal goes over Lesnar. It just doesn't make oh. sense. <clears throat> I think the only way you get out of this match is the fact that there is some type of a interference. And I'm going to say it right now, this is when the Shield 
Dave comes in and just causes mayhem and just destroys that main event. So there's no contest. Yeah. There you go. You start your Roman versus Brock feud leading up to the Rumble because I don't want to see that mania. And, and that's how you get out of this match. So neither guy gets pinned and both guys can go back to their respective brands hmm. and defend their titles there. I can dig that. I can dig that. You know, that's where the Shield did start, right? Survivor Series? They came in in the main event and just caused mayhem. I think if they want to come off as this top group in the WWE right now and just put themselves back on the top, they, they got to go in there and it is got to beat the shit out of both title holders right now or at Survivor Series and just make that match in no contest. Wow. I, I really just looked at, just thought of all the champions and I'm like, Alexa Bliss versus Natty. Yeah, not really interesting. That's two heels. Again, you're right. It's the not a good match. Like, don't get me wrong. Alexa. The Shield versus the Usos I could be cool. I love though. Alexa. I think Alexa is sexy as hell. But I still have that photo <laughs> when she when when you. Well, when you <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I said Alexa is sexy as hell, and my Alexa app just said thank you. <laughs> I have my Alexa home sitting next to me. Oh, Jesus. Alexa, say hi. Say hi, Alexa. Sorry, I'm not sure. Yeah, fuck you too. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, but I'm talking about Alexa Bliss, not you, Alexa. Uh, What's so, the, what was that fucking app that was – that the, the video app for Twitter? Uh, Periscope. Periscope. Remember she was Periscope and you were like – Fuck my friend, Angry Cooter, and then you screenshotted it when it came in front of her. I still have that as my uh, background screen. Uh, but I'm just that that match with the, what what is it going to do for me? Like oh. you said, and I said, there's two heels. Then you got the Miz versus Baron Corbin. That match does not intrigue me. You got two heels. Like there's no storyline there. And yeah. Well, those two, like I don't know. It's just the the whole Raw versus SmackDown. That's the story. But just. It just doesn't do anything for me. And then you the have this match is the most intriguing. Shield and the Usos. That match is going to be good. <laughs> that well, is the one match that I am okay with. Well, I, I I got a few messages on Twitter this week from our friend the Waz, Brian Wozniak. Uh, he wants to hear our opinion basically on what's happening on uh, the whole invasion with SmackDown. Let's get into this now. Now. Let me say my points. I'll let you guys say your points and get into it too. But yeah, I'll tell you what. I liked it. I enjoyed it that it was different. I, I don't think they should have had everybody do that because you had like faces doing like heel things like beating up guys backstage to where, you know, it's like, you know, why is, you know, Shinsuke Nakamura doing this or AJ Styles apart? You know, I, I get the whole yeah brand unity and whatever, but... I think it should have just been maybe all the heels. You know what I mean? Like, at least all the bad guys coming in from SmackDown and doing something like this. I liked it because it was a little bit different. You know, we haven't seen something quite like this in a while. Uh, but it was like, they were just, like, it wasn't just like, oh, we're going to beat up a few guys. They were beating up, like, pans backstage or grips, whatever you want to call them. Uh, <laughs> you know, and then they're, like, making Kurt Angle, like, watch. And it's like, wow, this is, did the whole SmackDown roster just turn heel? And then... Which is gonna, I'm sure Mike's going to bring this up, but like literally the next night you have the guys <laughs> facing each other who were in the fucking the whole damn so, invasion. And I'm like, you guys just teamed up last night to invade. Now you're fighting each other back to your storyline. That's what I'm sure we'll all get into. It just kind of was wet, messed up. But let's let's get into this invasion angle. I liked it. But at the same time, I was like, yeah, you're. These guys are really acting heelish. It wasn't just like come in, cause a ruckus, or just throw things around. They were just beating up people and doing heel things. And it was like, all right, Shane, what uh, what's going on here? I gotta say, I don't I don't think Nakamura has a future of being a heel. I don't. He looked so out of place in this <laughs> whole thing. It w- it was just bad. I mean, I understand the concept. I understand they wanted to build Survivor Series. I felt like they could have did it so much better. You know, they're beating up the the face women are beating up the hairdressers that are the same (laughs) hairdressers that are probably going to be doing their hair tomorrow at SmackDown Live backstage. Like, what what do you – how is that conversation going to start? Sorry I beat the shit out of you. You want to do my hair? (laughs) Like, come on. And you had Nakamura cheering on – Guys like Ziggler and Baron Corbin beating up stagehands. 
and and Woes actually tweeted to me about it, and he brought up a good point. How come none of these guys, you know, pay attention to the monitors that are all over backstage, <laughs> letting them know that somebody is uh, getting their asses kicked? They're coming into the locker room. It was just bad. It was just so bad. They made Kurt Angle look like this elderly old man who couldn't defend himself. Hmm. I felt like they could have did it so much better. And the one guy that he didn't stand out at first, and then I realized who it was, was Bobby Roode. Bobby Roode, yeah! He did not like He looked so generic in just a blue <laughs> t-shirt. And then, and then meanwhile, he's feuding with, with Dolph Ziggler, but they're helping each other beat the crap out of another stage hand like it oh my god it was just so bad i in my opinion you talk about the bobby Roode thing and and then the next night ziggler's like oh what you thought because we had the same color t-shirt on last night <laughs> it's like oh geez yeah thanks thanks for the callback great great booking but you know me i thought this was terrible <laughs> but from tragedy comes triumph because anybody who knows me when there's tragedy, what's my favorite thing, Mike? Um, I don't know. Memes. Oh, That's right. Yes. The That's memes, right. ladies and gentlemen. Holy God, did you see the Zack Ryder one? Yeah. And Charlotte Natty looks like he's looking down with that shit eating. Oh, Natty. Looked like he's Natty looking. Was oh, Natty looking at that big fat <laughs> ass. My God. No, did you see where her hand was? <laughs> Right on oh, the hand was grabbing his fucking cock. Yeah, watch that. Check it out. I'm just happy that they. Your hands on Pekka. <laughs> I'm just happy that they kept Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens out of this. Yeah, that was a smart move because they currently have a beef right now with with uh, Shane McMahon. It would have made zero sense. Yeah. What's if if they were involved in this? So I'm happy. That was the smartest thing they did. Other than that, Why is I Sami Zayn doing a job to Randy Orton. Uh, because it's it's veterans put over or vet <laughs> or the young talent put over veterans night. It's almost Two veterans day, yeah, we're almost there. <laughs> yeah, vet- veterans, veterans day. day is in know about it this week. <laughs> Well, okay. It was like two weeks ago. All right, but how about this? Okay, because uh, yeah, that was a little bit crazy on Raw at the end. And what would you think would happen the next night on SmackDown? Retaliation somehow? Nothing. They didn't fucking do anything. Like, uh, you fucking start this angle. Yes, there's four weeks or so until uh, Survivor Series, but come on. You didn't. There's, uh, so is, is SmackDown definitely the heels? And then you have Raw as the faces? Like, they're not going to retaliate? Or I mean, I thought there was something was going to happen. And the one biggest thing I want that to happen deep down inside is just fucking have Braun Strowman walk through. Have him debut. Like, have him, like, come back, resurrected out of the garbage truck, and just fucking destroy everybody. That would have been fucking funny. But still, like, I was waiting for something, and what are they going to wait? For next week? Or I was hoping for something. And that's the only thing I really wanted to tune in for is, like, oh, what's Raw going to do tonight to them? And they didn't do fucking anything. You know something? If I was one of those fucking hairdressers in the back, those women would not be coming out on SmackDown with nice hair. <laughs> I'll fucking cut a fucking chunk out of it. Like that's you. You oh, jump me on Raw. Curling iron a little too hot. I'm oh, sorry. Is it too hot for off. you? Oh, sorry. And then you jump me on Raw, and then you expect me to put you first in line to do your hair? Get <laughs> out of here. Fuck your extensions, bitch. Put them shits in yourself. <laughs> the thing is, like the the backstage hands that are at Raw. Are also the same backstage hands that are at SmackDown. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, lot just throw logic out the window. Yeah, well, yeah. Everybody listening, like I said, you know, we've been away for a few weeks. We're trying to catch up on all these things going on that we just haven't. Uh, so let's just keep going with this because usually we do a little different things here and there. But let's just keep going uh, and just talking about stuff. And one of the, you know, we're we're pretty much WWE heavy on the show, which is fine. There's a lot of other things going on in the wrestling world, but one thing I want to talk to you about is. After this whole fucking thing with Global Force Wrestling and W uh, and Impact Wrestling, Jeff Jarrett fucking was kicked out uh, of of them, like separated or whatever you want to call it, parts ways. That they basically fired, uh, and then now uh, Jeff Jarrett has checked himself into rehab uh, because I believe there's a video floating around where he was probably drunk in the ring over the weekend as well. And I think there was a lot of rumors going around that he was, you know, drinking a lot uh, at Impact and just doing a lot of crazy shit. So, meanwhile, over at Impact, I don't, I haven't, I honestly haven't watched it in a long time. But did they, did they get rid of the whole Global Force name? Do they have the Global Force Championship still over there, or what's going on with that? Or are they just kind of, you know, just pretend that never happened, kind of a thing? But I don't know. Have you guys read about this in Jeff Jarrett? What the hell is it? If I was the downfall of Jarrett. If I was Jeff Jarrett. 
If I was Jeff Jarrett and I bought into Impact, I'd probably be drinking too. I'd probably be drinking my miseries away. What the hell did I get myself involved in? Um, as I know, they got rid of the Global Force name. They parted ways. I haven't watched Impact, so I couldn't even tell you who the champion is right now. Um, I did hear that they have a, a pretty good storyline going with American Top Team that I'm actually going to... And, and I know Woes is going to give me shit about this because me and him go back and forth about Impact, but I'm, I'm actually going to go out of my way to see this American Top Team angle that a couple people have been talking about that said it's actually been pretty good. But other than that, like I, I just I don't know who their champion is. I don't know if they still have the Global Force title or they just brought back the Impact title. I don't know if the Owl's still floating around. I don't know if, you know... Freaking Joseph Parks is Abyss, or Abyss is Joseph Parks. I, I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> well, well, what's funny about this, too, is that he checked into rehab, but it was also because he's a former WWE employee, so right now it's under WWE's dime, which is kind of fucking funny out of everything. Uh, man, Jeff Jarrett, the downfall. I mean, he's been trying to push Global Force Wrestling for years now to for somebody big to sign him. They filmed a bunch of stuff. They did a show up here in Poughkeepsie. You know, they had all this stuff... And just, like, they filmed a bunch of stuff, and it was just kind of, like, marketing it around. And then it just kept getting later and later in the year, and then another year passed. And I'm like, they still have shit that's going around. They're trying to market. And it's like, that, you know, people are not even in Global Force Wrestling anymore. Like, if a few weeks back, I don't know if we talked about this. I think we might have to where they were showing. Yeah. I think we did the Bobby Roode thing. Like, Bobby Roode was yes. in Global Force, and they were trying to say that, oh, he's everywhere. You never know where he's going to show up. Former NXT champion. I'm like, <laughs> you plan it off like it was live. I remember that's, that. That's yeah. what you know when you hit the bottom of the barrel right there is when you're doing shit like that. Uh, Wait a minute. What are we talking about? The whole Global Force Wrestling Jeff Jarrett stuff. So, I mean, I'm just like, what, you know. What's that? I don't know what that is. Forget it. Let's let's move on. <laughs> yeah, that's all we don't talk about pretty this, much. This just in. Jeff Jarrett's drunk. Well, you know why? He married Karen Angle. What the fuck else do you expect to happen? Does Karen Angle have that on, on all the guys that she talks you know to? I'm saying. You notice they either are popping pills, getting fucked up. That, that must be a fucking real fucking nasty pussy, man. Let me tell you. Damn. <laughs> that's DR. W N K drunk Jarrett. So that's that's what we're going with. Uh, but guys, you know, mixing the worlds up here. I think you guys or Mike could probably tell us a little bit better about this. Or you too, Cooter. Uh, the whole Jericho and Kenny Omega thing going on now. Chris Jericho's having what a cruise or what's happening? They're having a little Twitter feud. Tell, okay. tell the world about this. So this is where I'm going at with this. So Jericho, as of right now, I believe he's not under contract. Um, and then I think he, he has one of those open door policies kind of, he can just show up, wrestle a couple of matches and then take time off now. <clears throat> now what's going on is Jericho has his cruise coming up next year, um, which is a cruise I will not be going on because I do not be, want to be on a boat with a thousand other dudes and that's special, no disrespect. I'm a wrestling fan, but I don't want to. I don't want to be on a boat, dudes. I'd rather have some females on there. Anyway, so be some ring rats, his... I'm sure. What's up? There'd be some ring rats, I'm sure. Uh, hopefully. But anyway, so so he's having this cruise, and Ring of Honor is going to be there. They're going to do a Ring of Honor tournament. There's going to be some indie stars, a lot of indie independent wrestlers going on, and then randomly, like Jericho just started tweeting at Omega, saying he's not the best in Winnipeg, and then. Omega started tweeting back. So they have this Twitter beef going. Now, there's rumors going on that Jericho versus Omega will be the main event on that cruise. Now, if that is true, that's actually a very good match right yes. there that I think is going to happen. And I think they're starting to build up a year in advance, which I, I think is brilliant. So it, it would intrigue more interest for ticket sales to this cruise because it's not sold out yet. I, I actually like the idea of what they're doing. That, and this is going to be actually the first time ever that Jericho will not be wrestling in a WWE ring since his, since WCW, obviously. But, you know, he hasn't wrestled for any other promotion. The only ring that's going to be set up there, guys, is a Ring of Honor ring. Huh. It's, it's going to be funny to see. But that, that that's the whole beef thing. Is, is they're, they're rumored. It's a rumor, allegedly. The interweb has told me. That it's Jericho versus Omega on that cruise. 
a, f- a couple of friends of mine are actually going uh, on to that Kid Rock fucking cruise, and that's the same cruise line company that's going to be doing Jericho's, I believe, or at least that's what I'm told. So the fact that they're trying to market this like a year in advance, I think is great. But if you look up in the lineup, I mean, yeah, you got that Ring of Honor tournament. They got some other bands that are going to be playing there. Like, that's going to be a fucking cool-ass cruise. But you, you, you know how Chris Jericho is. He's always in it. He always knows how to put himself into a ridiculous match somehow, some way. I mean, and any chance he could get at, at, at having a match with Kenny Omega, if he's got to do it in the fucking open waters on a cruise ship, I hope somebody films that fucking thing because I think that's something I would really like to see. Yeah. That, well, you, know, you said the whole ticket sales thing, too. I mean, having that kind of a match will, will, will be interesting. Um, that cruise isn't for another year either. It's literally yeah. a year from practically well, today from where we're built. Well, it's given everybody a year to start saving because it's not a it's not a cheap cruise. I mean, I was looking at ticket prices, and you know, for a single guy going on that cruise, it's it's close to twenty five hundred bucks. I mean, a little yeah, less. Yeah, but than they that. don't they don't expect to get to get paid all. All in full, exactly. You know, yeah, they got payment plans package. and all that thing. Like it, that's a, that's a pretty cool cruise line when it comes to that. Yeah, but I'm just they're giving everybody a year to start getting ready for it. I mean, a, a lot of cruise lines they do that where they you don't have to pay the full, you have the payment plans with that. But there's a certain deadline when mm-hmm. it has to be 100 percent full. But they're they're giving you a year to plan your schedule around the cruise. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, if they do have a crazy matchup like that, he's definitely going to have to pull some more hats or more rabbits out of his hat, if you will, uh, to definitely sell those tickets, I guess. You know, giving up those never-before-seen matches or something will definitely do that. So, uh, Cooter, you brought up to a while ago. You said Ricochet. We mentioned Ricochet real briefly. Uh, right now, we see reports that he's no longer taking any bookings until the end of January uh, and that he's no longer under contract with New Japan and Lucha Underground. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, people are saying, you know, he's expressed interest in going to the WWE in the past. Now let's just play, you know, let's just pretend uh, that that could be in the works for him in the, the next year. He goes to the WWE. Does he go to NXT? Does he get shot put right into the main roster? If he gets onto the main roster, please, 205 Live, please be buried with that. I, I don't want to see him in there. The cruiser, like He has to be a Finn Balor type of guy, especially with his talents. Uh, I don't know. I think this guy should definitely be shot put by like like a Finn Balor. But I, I don't know. Do you think he has to go to NXT or can we just put him on the main roster? Pretty much. Can we not put him on the main roster and just put him on NXT? Which is so funny because NXT is the show that I pretty much watch every week. Like I miss SmackDown this week. I mean, I saw parts of it, like you know, just in preparation from YouTube clips. I watched most of Raw, but I will guarantee you, I, I watch. 205 Live, for some reason I still watch that, because it's only an hour. And NXT. And NXT is my favorite show, and we never talk about it. So yeah, let's put Ricochet on there, because the second you put him on the main roster, he's going to be doing jobs to your fucking boy over there, <laughs> fucking... Uh, oh God, I, why do I always forget his name when I want to do the joke? I always do this, every fucking time we do the show. You, you, Carmella's fuck James Hills. Fu- yes, James Hills. I don't like, James that name. I don't like I bringing that name. I just wanted to hear up. you say it. Chin man. <laughs> hey. Ricochet debuts on the main roster and does the job to James Ellsworth. Wow. Yeah, I don't. Want, I don't want to see him on the main roster. I'm, they'll change his name to like Rebound or something. <laughs> <laughs> just put him in NXT where the fans will appreciate him. Just keep him down there. I, I wish the NXT was kind of like. The uh, like an actual like I know I understand it's a brand, but in in reality you got to remember too it is kind of a developmental in a way, where that's like a stepping stone to get to the main roster. I wish that that was technically a main roster brand, so it it, it was like a different universe compared to the actual WWE universe. Yeah. Where we don't have to see the horrible booking when the NXT guys and girls get moved up because you know Bailey was a great example of all that. <laughs> and I don't, I don't want to see that to Ricochet. Yeah, I don't want to see that to Adam Cole. I don't want to see that to Sanity. I don't want to see that to the Authors of Pain. None of the guys that are on NXT roster right now. I don't want to see them fall flat. 
Yeah, well. That, that fucking, that roster is just chock full of talent. I am enjoying that show so much. Hmm. Even even your boy, whose name I will now say <laughs> correctly, Andrade Cien Almas, is just worth his weight in gold. My God, I love that fucking guy. I think he's going to win an NXT title. I think so, too. I think that's the best move right there. Because I, I, I feel like you, you're bringing Drew McIntyre up now. Because I think he's filling fucking Big Cass's spot. Not, Big not Cass, only that, oof. but I, I, I think he's a stale champion. I just can't get into him as NXT champion. I mean, we don't need another long reign. You know, it's good to spread it out a little bit. Like, have this guy for a year, then have this guy for, like, six months, and then have this guy for, like, a two-month thing. You know, like, I don't want to see, like, long and long and long and long, all these long reigns of a uh, championship. So, yeah, I think Drew's, like, he doesn't, he doesn't need to stay down there. I think it was more or less, let's see what he can do. He's still got it kind of a thing. Let's bring him back up and, you know, fill fill up the gaps, uh, if you will. But, you know, guys, it's been it's been a few weeks, man. Uh, we, we talked a lot of stuff. We didn't even talk about Nia Jax also taking some time off after she was kind of getting a, a semi-push. But uh, we don't really have to. It's okay. I mean, I don't care. <laughs> it doesn't matter. But, you know, there's a lot of things that have happened. We, we've been off for a little bit. Things are going to come. Things are going to go. But one thing that made this show unique is that we kind of get into a little bit of a topic and just a few minutes on this guys. Uh, Mike, you moved. I moved cooter. You're always moving something. Something's happening. Uh, let's talk about man caves. Cause right now, you know, when you move to a new place, you kind of, kind of find your spot and you know, all the wrestlers out there, uh, wrestling fans out there, you know, you kind of have maybe, I don't know, a routine or something, if you will, especially when there's multiple shows going on. <laughs> I, I want you to, I want you to guys, let's build, tell me about your, maybe a fan cave. What do you need? in your fan cave what do you need uh to survive during this you know never ending wrestling uh universe you know every week there's fucking 20 shows on so it's like how do you guys survive what do you guys what do you want in your man cave basically if we could start cooter i'll start with you man you know if you have this one room to build you know what, what are you putting on the wall what's going in this fan cave and it, you know it doesn't have to be just wrestling but t- tell me tell the world what's what's a cooter man cave like a Cooter Man Cave is all of his DVDs, his television. My, I'm simple, man. Just give me my fucking reclining chair, my TV, my surround sound, and, and whatever fucking movie I want to watch. I'm really good. As long as there's fucking beer in my fridge, you, you won't hear a peep out of me. Well, what's hanging on the walls? Give me some of the stuff. What, what are you putting on your God, man cave? Oh, jeez. Well, look, I'm a fucking child, dude. I've got nothing but like... <laughs> I, I literally have one, two, three, four, five wooden Batman fucking, uh, oh, God. Credo, this is dumb. Can, about, can I start over? Yeah, yeah. Please, can I start over? <laughs> All right, no, Bring up your OJ Simpson. talk about what's in my room. You're talking about man caves. I'm going to talk about somebody who had a man cave and hated it because it is wrestling related. All right? All right. I knew somebody who had... Every possible fucking WWE pay-per-view on DVD. He had every fucking, like, box set. Every new title that came out. Like, he got every time a fucking Tuesday came out, he was in Walmart making sure that he had the fucking latest and greatest WWE DVD. He has, like, fucking three bookcases of this shit, right? It's ridiculous. It covers a whole wall. It's just DVDs. And then when the announcement of the WWE Network was that you could access the entire library, he screamed, no! And why is that? My whole fucking great DVD collection is now worthless. It's only worth $9.99. And I died laughing my balls off. So fuck your man cave, you fuck boy. You spent all thousands of dollars on DVDs. And now all you had to do was spend ten bucks, and you could have watched whatever you wanted. You fucking douchebag. <laughs> well, Cooter, if you, uh, speaking of, uh, if just to give an idea, what, what would an angry cave look like? I mean, is there some prize possessions out there? It doesn't even have to be wrestling related. I know you got some right, kind of cool right. stuff. I, I but do got some stuff. Well, I do what would got you? What would definitely be on the walls if we walked into this angry cave, though? Oh God, you definitely see the John Starks poster, the dunk, where he dunks over Jordan and, and Horace Grant. You're definitely going to see probably some graffiti because I have this old piece of fucking, what do they call those? Somebody airbrushed graffiti on this thing. was making fun of my friend Jeff. 
and he had it hanging on his wall for years. It was great. And I ended up stealing it because he moved and didn't want it no more. So I stole that shit. So I have graffiti, basketball posters, a lot of comic book fucking uh, things. I got those like wooden fucking pictures. How about uh, their old comic covers? How about going back in history a little bit with me and you? How about that uh, O.J. Simpson autographed jersey from uh, New Jack? That stays in the closet, though. That don't get put on the wall. All right. Because I actually wear that. <laughs> I wear it with pride because I don't think New Jack would want his signature <laughs> on my wall. He wants it on the jersey as someone's wearing it, getting heat the way he got heat. Well, there you go. All right, Michael. Mm. Let's, let's move on to you real quick. Uh, uh, what goes on the minority mic man cave wall? Like, what do you want in your room? Multiple uh, girls' panties <laughs> to showcase to the world. <laughs> um, well, I'm gonna steal something from my boy Mario. My boy Mario has his man cave, but it's he calls it the Bat Cave because he's obsessed with Batman too. He has one gigantic big screen TV that's surrounded by four other TVs and he makes it look like it's like the Batman control center. That's where he gets to watch multiple football games. I think I'll do that idea where I could watch multiple football games as well. Um, on my walls, um, I, I go to, when I do go to NXT events, I always get the poster and I always put the poster in a frame and I hang that on the wall. So that's like my wrestling related stuff. I have some title belts, but I'll also put my Yankee memorabilia stuff because I'm a huge Yankee fan. One win away from the World Series and they they lost. Let's not get into that. No more jokes. Uh, um, I have Rocky one, two, three, and four posters in a frame. Nice. Notice how I did not say five because that was the worst <laughs> Rocky movie ever. Come on, that movie's great. It was horrible. Touch me and I'll sue. <laughs> sue me for yeah. what? Don King. <laughs> want to be over there you know and, and I, I like a lot of 80s movies like certain movies so I, i'm i want to get some of those in frames put on the wall and then i just want to have my recliner i want to have a little refrigerator where i can open it and just grab a beer or reach in the freezer and grab some liquor if the booking is that bad <laughs> and then i'll drink and then just just chill out in my man cave maybe i don't know How you not throw like on Rocky some porn five. <laughs> you gotta move back and forth like a windshield washer. Hey, yo, Tommy, I didn't hear no bell. Come on, man. I that think we bad. need to dedicate a whole show to Cooter pretending he's Rocky or something like that. That'd be great. It Angry so, Rocky. The, Rocky Five was the worst. <laughs> Nothing to do with boxing. It's not even a movie. It's a comedy. That shit is hilarious. Uh, Tommy Gunn. Think, Tommy um, Gunn got to be in the Rush being this billionaire to be in some broke ass bum moving back to fucking Philly. It's what that bothered me. Like in reality, that would never happen like that. <laughs> Paul, he signed you, over all his money to some bum. Another boxing podcast. <laughs> Fucking, another first Rocky of all, podcast. okay. First of all, let's 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 look at this, okay? If I was Rocky, why would you put? creative control of your finances in the hands of fucking Paulie, who is a degenerate gambler in the first place, who in Rocky 3 was completely jealous of Rocky. Like, this guy was a degenerate gambler, an alcoholic in the movie. (laughs) Why would you put your financial control, your assets, your life savings in the hands of fucking (laughs) Paulie? It just shows how retarded Rocky was. Wow. Well, uh, you know. See how I can just throw you a swerve like this and give you some great conversation? <laughs> I love it. It's a, you know, it's another Rocky podcast, ladies and gentlemen. It's great, but uh, you know, real quick, if you walked in to a Credo Man Cave, I'm gonna have that Winged Eagle frame championship belt that I had on my bachelor party from Cooter and some other boys I had over there. You know, I, I love that belt. I also had a big thing with a lot of these mini titles because. I didn't want to buy a regular fucking title because they're just too much, too expensive. So I would buy like these the mini titles, and I'd get them autographed, and I'd stick them in a frame. So I have like three in each frame. So I get my mini titles on the wall. Uh, you know, I have too many fucking movies. You know, that was the thing. Like you're saying, your friend bought all those movies. I had a lot of DVDs, and you know, it's at the time where you didn't think fucking things would go digital. So I got all too many fucking movies to just throw on the wall. Cause, and I'm just gonna keep them because nobody fucking wants to pay. You know money for them. They're only going to give you like a dollar for them, so I'll just might as well keep them anyway. Uh, but, you know, a lot of movies on the wall. I got it, my old classic Winged Eagle belt. Um, and, you know, keep it simple. 
a nice big TV, uh, you know, keeping that network on 24 seven or, or whatever. Uh, but you know, keep it simple, nice and dark. It's got to be dark in my man cave, and that's I don't know. I don't, I don't want a lot of lights in there. Just dark TV, and I'm happy. Make it a real, a real kind of cave, I guess. All right, can I'm we talk about like, Rocky yeah. Five some more? <laughs> Fuck! What's the fucking problem now? The fucking cable and internet went out. I can't watch TV or the pay-per-view. Wait, I, I can't even watch Walking Dead? No! Fuck Optimum. Oh, oh.